You're watching Reality Check, going by the headlines and by glowing reactions from CEOs and the stock markets. It appears that the major cuts in corporate tax by the government has more or less ended the slowdown. But now increasingly questions are being raised over whether the cuts, without doubt a major step, are indeed the silver bullet that can reverse the downturn. Remember the cuts were justified with the argument that high taxes have hobbled India Inc. and curbed investments. The facts, however, aren't as clear-cut. Let's take the first claim that tax cuts will enrich a quote-unquote cash-starved India Inc. Well, here's one fact that the top 500 companies in the BSC are holding cash assets of 8 lakh crore rupees, according to data compiled by the Indian Express using analysts. These are some of these top cash-rich companies. Infosys with cash assets of about 20,000 crores, TCS about 12,000 crores, LNT 11,000 crores, Bharti 8,000 crores, HCL Tech 7,800 crores. Reliance Industries 7,000 crores, ITC 4,000 crores, Hindustan Unilever 3,700 crores, Asian Paints and Maruti anywhere between 400 to about 200 crores. The second claim of course is that this very high initial rate of 30% effective, 35% tax rate was hurting investment. While again the facts suggest that even before the cut, companies were paying lower taxes. Of the top 10 profit-making companies on the Bombay Stock Exchange that we analysed, four of them paid taxes less than or around 25% already. These are companies like Reliance India Limited, Reliance Industries Limited, I beg your pardon, TCS, Wipro, HCL Tech. They paid anywhere between a 20 to 24% tax rate. The third claim, of course, is that lower taxes automatically equate to higher investment, while in fact, there is no guarantee that necessarily that these firms will use their savings made from these tax cuts for fresh investment. They may simply use it to pay down debt or may just end up paying higher dividends. So that again remains a question mark. All right, uh, so those are the claims and those are the facts that appear to not quite match those claims. Joining us tonight to debate this, uh, we have with us uh, Dr. Brinda Jagirdar, economist and uh, former chief economist at the State Bank of India, Jayati Ghosh, professor of economics at the School of Social Chances in JNU, Vivek Gupta, national head MNA tax KPMG in India, Mihir Sharma, senior fellow, ORF Observer Research Foundation. Uh, Mihir, let me just start with you that now that the initial sort of euphoria on these tax cuts has started to wear out and these questions are being raised, uh, what do you make of it? I mean, are indeed those claims that were made that this is a silver bullet being somewhat countered by facts which suggest that a lot of companies are in fact cash rich and perhaps that really wasn't the reason why they weren't investing? Look, I don't think that there is a single silver bullet for the investment slowdown and I don't and I think anyone who thought that the tax cut would be that silver bullet was, you know, maybe just overreacting in the moment. Hmm. Um, it can be one part of a larger strategy to revive in, uh, to revive investment, an important part, and I'm glad they've done it. It's a promise. Remember that, yes, you know, Arun Arun Jaitley Jaitley had made, made in his first ago. budget. So it's something that they've lived up to, and it's a, it's an excellent signal for uh, for what might happen going forward. Sure, but it's in its in and of itself, this is not going, and this should nobody should have assumed this is going to revive investment. The concern was actually um, that it would. Um, badly hurts the fiscal deficit. Right. And it turns out now that people have looked more closely at the numbers and mm. the, that, the, that the deficit's impact is not as great as we expected. Right. Partly because, as you pointed out, many large companies are already paying, you know, not that far away from the 25% rate. Right. Um, according to this year's budget. Yes. Um, and they, you know, the budget very helpfully gives us the numbers. Mm. Uh, the effective tax rate for companies with a turnover of more than 500 crores is uh, between 26 and 27 percent. Right. So, this so it's takes not that far away from the, from what the you lower slab. Yeah. Okay. Uh, so then, uh, Brinda Jagirdar, how does one uh, sort of explain all the hype around this announcement? Because, uh, you know, if we are seeing that companies already were fairly cash rich, that the effective tax rate they were paying was not that different to what this lower tax rate is, uh, then how does this address the slowdown, because many people are saying that the real cause of the slowdown is the fact that there's been a slump in demand 
and this doesn't quite address that. So the reason why companies were not investing was not shortage of cash or high taxes, but simply because there wasn't demand. Let me put this in context. The slowdown that we are seeing now is both cyclical as well as structural. The structural factors, the biggest structural factor is the slowdown in the investment GDP ratio for the last almost 10 years. It has come down from about 34% to under 30% today. Hmm. Similarly, the savings deposit ratio also, savings GDP ratio has also come down sharply. Hmm. So it, the, the measure has sought to address, like, I mean, I agree with the previous speaker who said this is, this is no single bullet, but this is an attempt to address this structural slowdown. Hmm. And when we say that there is, a, and the, the company Companies that you have sh talked about, Infosys, TCS, etc., these are basically uh, the, 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 they're tech companies and they don't really need so much of capital. It's the manufacturing companies who have been suffering this brunt. And so the, the slowdown in investment is sought to be no, addressed sorry, by, it's this, not by just, cutting the. I just uh, want to quickly the, correct the, you the, there. The, the sorry, I just want to correct you no, there. Sir, it's not come, just tech something. companies. It's not just tech companies. It includes LNT, it includes, which is, you know, infrastructure at Bharti Airtel, which is telecom. RIL, which is again, you know, it's a, it's not a tech company. There's ITC in there as well, Hindustan, Unilever, Asian Paints, that. Maruti, I, Suzuki. I, I These that, are just the top ten, your, by the yes, way. That's fine. Yeah, I see that, but most of it, but the top, but the top ones are the tech companies are, are misleading. That's what I want to say. But then both, both and anything just else. two Remember, tech companies in the list of the top ten we put the, on the, the screen. The companies, the, the multinational companies. Yes, yeah, sorry, go ahead. Yes, but they are the top ones. They're the top ones. Yeah, all right. So uh, my contention is that don't confuse the thing by bringing in tech companies. Let's stick with manufacturing companies, and that they are the ones who are feeling the problem. They are funds. Of, they are the ones who are feeling the brunt of the slowdown. And this is a time when we are opening up, and we need to open up because company more than there are reports saying more than 200 companies want mm. to move out of uh, China, for example, and they are looking at Vietnam and other countries. So the moment we bring down our tax rates, it will become attractive to these companies also to come into India. Okay. And uh, th this is a time when we need, uh, there, and it's also like we have uh, opened up 100% uh, manu contract manufacturing. Yes. Uh, so, you know, th this will make it attractive for companies to come in right. and create jobs. And uh, that's what we need right now, which, and, uh, which is okay. is that per demand and okay. uh, consumption. Okay. All right. Uh, so, so Jayati Ghosh, do you then agree with what seems to broadly be so far at least the consensus around the table that this may not immediately reverse the slowdown it's clearly not obviously the silver bullet but eventually this is the kind of reform that india needs to create jobs to bring in investment and to compete with china and so on no i don't agree at all there is no evidence globally that tax cuts actually increase investment in fact it's all the other way around even in the united states the big trump's tax cut basically led to share buybacks and other kinds of things rather than more investment it's been a big failure on that front what we need today is actually to generate demand and the government is tying its hands by redu reducing its fiscal revenue access to actually just give away this money, which may or may not be invested. In fact, mm -hmm. it's unlikely. And it's therefore n denying itself the ability to spend more to revive demand. I think it's a very big mistake, actually. But there are just a couple of things I want to just mention about this. One, I yes. think it's all of the measures announced so far by the finance ministry are actually supply side measures. The problem right now it's cyclical and structural, of course, but the immediate cyclical problem is mm. inadequate demand. Mm. You have to fix that first. So okay. just like the big companies are sitting on cash reserves, those who can borrow are not borrowing because mm. they don't actually want to uh, enter a market where already there's excess capacity. Mm. And finally, this is actually very bad for the FISC, but it's not just the central government FISC. This is hitting the state governments. And notice, they haven't cut the surcharges and cesses. They're right. keeping all of that for themselves. Right. They're reducing the part that they would have had to share with state governments without checking with them, without asking them, without getting any kind of national consensus on this. I think that's very unfair. Okay. Because you're doing something which is not going to benefit any, any the economy in general. Okay. And you're depriving states and the center of much needed revenue. Okay. Let me just get Vivek Gupta in on this. Vivek, just first on Jayati's initial contention where she said that there is no evidence which suggests that tax cuts actually lead to higher investment. Is this true? So we're actually missing a couple of very important points. Okay. 
So I would actually argue that there was no option but to go in for a tax cut. Okay, but just on that point, on just on that point and of I, fact, I, though, I, is there evidence to suggest that no, so tax cuts historically or in other parts of the world or elsewhere? So over the last three years, have led to of, higher investment. Over the last three years, post the U.S. tax reform, post U.S. tax rate going down to twenty-one percent, mm. actually U.S. has been perhaps the most active economy in the world. But as a result of higher investments, investment has fallen in the U.S. But as a result of higher investment is the question because that's so the, the amount, logic for our tax the cuts. The amount of capital that has been pulled back into the U.S. Hmm. as a result of the fact that tax rates have gone down to twenty-one percent, okay, is is for everyone to see. But okay. the point that I, the point that I make is actually but a larger investment point. Investment has fallen. We had we had no choice but to go in for this tax rate cut. Okay. Globally, if you see over the last twenty years. Hmm. What are the tax rates around the world? U.S. is twenty-one. Sure. Britain is nineteen. Sure. China is twenty-five. Sure. Russia is twenty. You keep your tax rate at thirty-five percent. You are perpetuating the vicious cycle of people not finding attractive enough IRRs to invest. Eventually, though, eventually, right. A decision to invest is based on IRR, and that's why the the the, the graphic that you put up about. Cash available with companies in India yeah. is perhaps not the right way to look at it. Okay. Even if I have, even graphic, if no, okay, sorry, hold on a second. What about the graphic which actually suggests that the effective tax rate a lot of companies are paying is already somewhere in that twenty-five, twenty-six percent range? So what about that? So the the paper in the budget that he quotes, Mihir quotes, and and that's right. The three ninety-three companies which are shown to have an effective tax rate of twenty-six point five percent when their profitability is more than five hundred crores. Hmm. That having been said. That's on a base tax rate of thirty percent. We will still continue to have mm. the same depreciation rates as in the Income Tax Act. So I would expect that even for those companies, right, the tax rate will actually, if their current effective tax rate is twenty six and a half, right, as a result of the cut, it would translate into twenty six and a half, probably becoming twenty three and a half, not twenty five point one seven. Okay. Because so these these, because these will... figures are calculated okay. on the basis of tax paid upon book profit. Okay, this is this could get a bit technical, especially for our ordinary viewer. Uh, you're saying there will be a reduction, but remember the reduction was hyped as a 10% drop. Uh, this may end up being a smaller drop, but let's leave that aside. I, I want to come to you on the wider point that Jayati was making, which is that there is nothing which addresses demand, and that is really the real so, reason okay. why we're being okay. dragged down. So, to that, you would say what? So briefly. We'll, so we'll come to the demand point as well. As but if I can just come to that now, because I need to move on. Okay. So as he mentioned. When you put more more money in the hands of the companies, two hmm. or three things will happen. Right. One, they could invest more. Right. If they were, and if they invest more, certainly demand side triggers are are uh, come into the economy. Hmm. Second, they could actually pass this down in the form of price reductions. Hmm. If you, I would imagine that for most of the FMCG companies, some of which you referenced in the in the graphic today, they would be looking aggressively at how they can pass on some of this benefit to the consumer in the form of price cuts. Okay. Again, spurring demand in the economy. Is that okay? So, and, 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 Mihir, yeah, and yes. I'm not in the camp which suggests that this by itself mm. is that one golden move that sure. will completely revive the economy. Okay, having, that having been said, we cannot criticize this on the basis of other facts alone. Okay, fair enough. No, no, I don't think the question is to criticize it. The question is whether to simply contest some of the claims being made around it. Uh, Mihir, do you actually see that happening? Is there any assurance at all that corporates? Will now pass on these benefits to consumers by lowering prices, by fresh investments, by creating jobs. Um, well, I think that in, in in a way, both Vivek and Jayati are right here, yeah. right? Which okay. is that I'm intrigued. <laughs> um, which is that there is, uh, um, you know, uh, Jayati is right that the you know there is there is no evidence to suppose. That uh, tax cuts will necessarily lead to an increase in investment, and there isn't. Well, the Trump tax cuts have not. Right, right. Okay. Uh, in the uh, whatever increase in investment in the uh, happened in the U.S., the consequence is entirely due to high oil prices, and there have been, been studies, uh, uh, econometric okay. studies, okay. that have demonstrated that. Okay. Um, that said, however, um, there will possibly be a demand effect. Will it be as strong a demand effect as it would have been? Uh, you know, as as an increase in government spending, probably not. Mm. But here's the question that I have um, for those who would say that we need to, you know, push more demand mm. out to the mm. base of the pyramid, mm. and that is that given what we've seen with the GST, right? Mm. 
um, which is that the GST has underperformed by 1.7 lakh crore this year. Right. Why? I mean, that is an that is a, a, a you know a large pro uh, some proportion of that is ev evasion, some proportion of that is a slowdown. We don't mm. know what is what, mm. but the portion that is evasion can be considered to be um, a fairly large fiscal stimulus, right? That mm. has not had uh, had a demand effect. I think that w what we need to sit down and consider right now is mm. what is holding back a recovery? Are they demand factors or are they actually uh, structural factors? Right. And a lot of people say it's just they're not, there's not enough money in the hands of people. Mm. But I think that it is it is also true that even if you have you know lowered interest rates, you know p p created more demand, right? There just aren't that many bankable pr proje uh, projects that have the right risk profile for investors right wow. now. Okay, that's, and that's why investment is not recovering. Okay, that <laughs> that takes us into a, another dimension. But uh, Brinda Jagidar, how would I come to Jayati? I'll come to you in a second. But Brinda Jagidar, how would you? Uh, would you firstly agree with me here that this is just far more complex than simply saying that we need to stimulate demand or do you also concede that that's one area of weakness that the government has demonstrated that none of these measures have, have really addressed that aspect of it? There is no doubt that there is a demand slowdown also but when you find that the big companies closing down and throwing people out of jobs how do you think that is going to stimulate demand? So the fact is mm. that the, the very fact that they keep the production going yeah. and uh, people are holding on to their jobs will give them some confidence now to go and buy, to take a loan. So I think there is definitely a demand stimulus also over there. Mm. And today I think the companies will not have a choice but to pass on this uh, in the form of uh, discounts and lower rates to the consumers because right. it's a very competitive and open economy. Right. So today's situation and India's situation is very different from what's happened in the US and I think we need more studies to show that. Okay. Uh, and then uh, uh, where uh, the deficit is concerned, I think that deficit will be get more than offset or, or rather partially offset definitely hmm. by the exemptions which will no longer be claimed now. So I, the, we need not worry that uh, there, there was a Nomura study which I'd like to just quote over here uh -huh. that uh, they were expecting about 0.7% of GDP to be uh, outgo as, as in the form of um, uh, this tax cuts yes. which is given away. But this will be made up by the exemptions. So overall the uh, expectation is that the, mm. there will not be a major uh, impact on the budget deficit, maybe mm. a 0.3% which could again get offset by the disinvestment and other proceeds that come in. Okay. So uh, the, this is a very good step that was taken but certainly it is not one and it is not a, an, an answer, okay. one answer to all the problems in the economy okay. today. Okay. Jayati, you wanted but to come let's in. Not, uh, let's not run it down or let's not uh, yes. belittle its impact. Sure. Jayati, yes. Uh, in fact, I, I want to pick up on the point that Brinda made. It's precisely the issue of the exemptions. You see, this lower tax rate is available only to companies that do not avail of exemptions. Mm. Most of your big companies, the top 100, are actually massively availing of exemptions. So the big winners in this are really not manufacturing companies or infrastructure companies, the, which all get exemptions. The big winners are the financial companies which never got actually exemptions. Hmm. So they are the ones who are actually going to rake in a lot more profits. Whether giving more profits to the hands of finance companies is going to generate more investment is a very big question and I, I think there's absolutely no chance of that happening actually. Uh, okay. What we have to remember is that the average tax paid is, well forget the average, because the average conceals the fact that the bigger companies pay lower tax rates. Right. The bigger companies are actually going to pay around the same, there's no benefit really okay. for them. The beneficiaries are finance companies. Okay. That I don't think is something that is a big inducement to invest in the areas that we need. And it okay. certainly doesn't necessarily generate more employment. Finance companies do lots of other things with their profits. Right. They don't go around hiring more people just because they have more profits. Okay, so you're saying that the manufacturing exemptions... Manufacturing companies also, manufacturing companies also have benefited. What, uh, Vivek Gupta, could, I mean, if the government had a choice, uh, given the fact that they do have financial constraints, if they had the option of also trying to do something to stimulate demand, uh, what could that have been? I think what would you have suggested, if at all, that they needed to move on that front? So I think infra, infra spending, spending on infrastructure hmm. has been shown to stimulate demand in the short term right. always. And that's an easy win. But I think this was 
a structural need for the economy sure. any which way. So this was something you're saying needed to be done and now it's done. So but in the short... Th yeah, so therefore, sorry. this should have been priority number one any which way. Right. This makes us competitive. So for example, when a global multinational is now looking to set up a manufacturing base in India hmm. versus in China, right. uh, when they're seeing the effective tax rate of 17% for a new manufacturing operation in hmm. India, hmm. immediately their IRR shoots up and therefore, the project gets awarded to India. The fact that China is in a trade war with the US right. helps our case. Right. So, I'm already seeing a lot of multinationals immediately coming back. And, and it could be just the euphoria of the, of, of the announcement. But immediately coming back to us and, and wanting to understand as to how their project projections look now. I see. In fact, so, I wanted to ask you that. that is, are you already seeing some signs of interest? Absolutely. So, and on the, on the manufacturing company side and on the FMCG company side. Hmm. So, this is a very natural reaction that will occur. Okay. I know a lot has been said about the fact that the US economy uh, having grown is not a direct result of Trump's tax cuts. Hmm. Hmm. The point is it may not have spurred investment, but the fact that it has got the amount of capital back that it has got back. That itself is a positive. The fact that buybacks and different distributions have hmm. happened and therefore demand picks up. There is a whole virtuous cycle you create in the economy when the government doesn't spend, right. but the government puts money in the hands of private enterprise yeah. to either spend or pay down loan or, or do whatever with it. Okay. Uh, Mir, very quickly on the politics of this, because uh, you know, Brinda is arguing that actually this is not going to hit the fiscal deficit. But if it does end up doing that, if the government now has to cut back on some of its spending, uh, you know, a number of flagship schemes, these are politically very important to the government. Is this, is this going to be a tough balancing act? I don't see the government cu cutting back on spending. I think it's been quite clear for the past three years that um, they're willing to borrow off budget in all sorts of crazy ways, but they're not going to cut back on spending. They, they think... They will find sources of... They'll find sources funds, of income. Look, uh, look they, 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 they've, they've gotten quite adept at having their cake and eating it too. Uh, you know, you, you push up uh, a lot of spending, you increase welfare spending, you have infrastructure spending, and you show a 3.3% fiscal deficit. Um, and that's because, you know, the food corporation of India is borrowing like mad on the market when, you know, it, logically it shouldn't be. Um, so there's a lot of this kind of stuff happening, and the government will continue to do it until there's mm. some kind of crisis of government debt. We're, we're some distance away from that, so they're going to they feel... Look, the political em emphasis here was the stock market has to look good, and I have to, um, if I'm the Prime Minister, I have to sit in Houston with the energy CEOs and tell them, look, the stock market is roaring and come in, you know, and India has a 25% tax rate, I'm business friendly. <laughs> well, that had to happen. Okay. Uh, we're completely out of time. Uh, Brinda Jagedar, last, last comment from you. You think, how soon do you think that the impact of this is going to be felt? I mean, Vivek is saying at the moment, of course, there are expressions of interest, but there's still a long way from that to actually this translating on the ground. What sort of timeline is realistic? Yeah, not. Yes, I would agree with what Vivek is saying. It's not just the companies from abroad who want to come in, but even the new manufacturing uh, company. We would see some new manufacturing activity also. But what's the timeline? It is so attractive. Okay. Jayati, so you. I say yeah. about definitely not immediately. It's not, and this yeah. is not meant to be an immediate you know, uh, fix also. Okay. It will take some time. Okay. La very quickly, Maybe. Jayati, last word. don't only. Okay. Yes. Yeah, investors don't only look at interest rates. They look at the state of infrastructure. They look at the other aspects of it. They look at the strength of the domestic market. They look at all the other areas in which currently we do not look attractive at all. So, yes, expressions of interest immediately, unless we fix these other problems of right. really bad infrastructure and really major backlogs, as well as a very slack, uh, slack demand, you're not going to get these expressions of interest translate into actual investment. Okay. Well, let's wait and see how it unfolds. Uh, <laughs> but it certainly made the entire conversation around the downturn interesting. Thank you all so much uh, for joining us. That's all the time we have on Reality Check. Thanks for watching. Bye.